Here is Senator David Perdue. Uh, Senator, thank you very much. And I understand you are under quarantine after coming in close contact with somebody who did test positive for uh, COVID-19. How are you and, and what exactly happened? I guess this uh, was announced 30 minutes before you were due to uh, speak at an event in Gainesville alongside Lindsey Graham. Um, how are you doing? Hi, Julie. Uh, my wife and I are doing just fine. We tested negative, but We've been testing our team regularly here. Uh, we had our 100th stop road tour last night in Hiawassee, Georgia. We've had great response around the state, but we had uh, someone test positive yesterday morning, and according to CDC guidelines and our doctor's recommendations, uh, we, with an abundance of uh, caution, we've decided to go into quarantine these last few days. It's terrible timing, but we are, sure. are not going to uh, miss a step, Jill. We're going to participate in all these events as if I were there. Yeah. Um, were you all wearing masks with whomever it is that you came in contact with? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've washed our hands, watched our distance, and we've been wearing okay. masks, following all the protocol. Um, you know, this is just uh, part, of, uh, part of the year we've been in. Um, I but I want to go back to what I heard uh, my opponent just say. He, just, he defined the, the problem. But he's never offered a solution for this COVID crisis. As a matter of fact, when he was pushed on it in a debate by himself, he said, well, I don't want to get bogged down in the details. As a matter of fact, when we were in the details providing $47 billion for our state, which saved a million and a half jobs, he opposed it at the same time that his father took a half a million dollar loan to save his business. So the Democrats don't want to talk about the issues. They're really all about hiding the agenda that they're trying to perpetrate and distracting the voters from the real issues here. How do you feel this $2,000 stimulus check is going to uh, possibly affect your campaign? I know that you and Kelly Loeffler are both in support of the president, um, but unfortunately, Mitch McConnell has other plans. He wants to lump this bill into multiple other issues um, when they would love this to just be a standalone bill so they could get it voted on and get those checks out to the American people. What would you like to say uh, to the people of Georgia who are counting on that money? Well, first of all, this should have been done back in September. Uh, those of us who fought for those and put those bills up uh, knew we needed help back then when the first round of CARES ran out. Some $15 billion in the PPP program came to Georgia, and as I said, saved 15 or uh, 1.5 million jobs here. We knew that in the fall we would need more help and try to get it. The Democrats had blocked it several times going into the presidential election. They didn't want to give President Trump will win. Now, we've been pushing in the, in the last two months. We finally got a compromise. Certainly, we need more help than the 600. The 2,000, I fully support the president's right. I support him in the Section 230. This is a big tech uh, rein in. And then I also support the president in his requirement or request to get some sort of federal uh, review of what happened in the November elections. Right. I'm just not sure if they're going to be able to do all of that at once. I mean, if you were to pull the stimulus relief checks and make that a separate issue, maybe perhaps there would be a fast track to getting those checks in the mail. But because they are lumped in um, with those two other issues, it may be a while, and the American people really don't deserve to have to wait another minute for this. I want to talk about some newly released polls, uh, this one from JMC Analytics and Polling, which found that Warnock and Ossoff are leading over you and Senator Leffler as early votes are cast. And, and we have a look at the Georgia U.S. Senate runoffs, early voting as of December 31st. Uh, in total, the mail-in ballots were almost 900,000. Total in-person uh, early voting, almost 2 million. And total voted at uh, 2.8 million. Uh, first of all, the whole mail-in vote thing was a nightmare during the election, which is why the president um, has been contesting a lot of those votes. But there have been uh, poll watchers, as you know, double the normal amount. They've got some 8,000 poll watchers uh, in the state of Georgia. Do you believe uh, that this will be a fair election? Well, certainly it's going to be a tight election. Um, as an outsider, I've never believed in these polls. Um, they had me down eight to 10 points in 14. We won by eight then. We had me down five in November. We won against this Democrat by two. As a matter of fact, 52.5% of Georgians voted against the Democratic agenda and John Ossoff in my race. So if we get our vote out on Monday, uh, I'm convinced now with 8,000 poll watchers and we've got cameras on all the drop boxes, uh, we're going to have as fair an election as we can. But we've got to make some changes in the state of Georgia. We have a double standard. If you vote in person, like most Republicans do, you have to have a photo ID. But with a, an absentee ballot that's mailed in, there are a lot of ways to get around that. <clears throat> and quite frankly, there's some questions that have not been answered. Some people talk about voter suppression in Georgia. This idea that 
we have a double standard where it's a signature verification, and there have been vagaries around that, Julie. Mm -hmm. uh, it suppresses the vote of people who are trying to do it the right way. So we're going to get to the bottom of this, but in terms of January, I'm convinced that we have plugged a lot of the holes that might have been there in November. Uh, you've got a, a lot of big names coming out in your support uh, headed to Georgia before Tuesday's election. The president came back from Mar-a-Lago yesterday. He plans on going to Georgia on Monday, uh, a day ahead of the event. But you've got Pence, you've got the president, Nikki Haley, Lindsey Graham, Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, Senator Ted Cruz, Texas GOP chairman Alan West, and uh, Congressman Dan Crenshaw uh, siding for the Republicans. On the Democratic side, Joe Biden, president-elect, uh, Kamala Harris and Stacey Abrams will all be headed to Georgia. Um, this is a huge rally. I mean, if you look, first of all, at the side of the Republicans, huge rally uh, to get you uh, into that seat uh, so that Republicans can control the Senate. Are you concerned at all that you will not physically be on the campaign trail, unfortunately, because of your forced quarantine here? Um, and how confident are you that you guys are going to pull this out on Tuesday? We're winning, we're winning right now, and the best example of that is, our best evidence of that is the, the November race itself. But, you know, we've made 100 stops around this state from Hayhire to Hiawassee. We've talked to the people. We've taken our message to the people, and we've talked about issues, and we've talked about the importance of getting the vote out. We're going to get our vote out on Tuesday and win this thing because people in Georgia know, Joey, this is the last line of defense against this radical socialist agenda that the Democrats are trying to perpetrate. They're trying to hide it from the Georgia people right now, but that's not going to work. And so what we've done in the last six weeks is made sure people knew what was at stake. We have to protect what we've done in the last four years and make sure the Democrats don't come and put us back into the dark days that we saw during the Obama and Biden administration when they gave us eight years of the lowest economic output in U.S. history and really destroyed a lot of the foreign policy things that had been built up over 30 years abroad. So. I'm confident we're going to get our vote out and do just fine on Monday or right. Tuesday. Uh, uh, good for you, and we'll look forward to watching. Uh, I want to turn to uh, John Ossoff and your Democratic opponent's comments when he pushed back yesterday, as you probably saw in an interview with Peter Ducey here on Fox. Uh, he called your attacks on his ties to China and a Hong Kong company's payment utter nonsense. I'm going to have you watch this clip and then have you react. Are you concerned that through a payment to a well-known young Democrat, uh, somebody linked to China or the Chinese through another company could be trying to influence you? Come on, man. You're a serious reporter. That's right. That's why he's asking the question. <laughs> your response. Exactly. Well, he is a serious reporter. That's why this question needs to be asked, but it's not asked by any of the liberal media that's out there. It's amazing to me that you can have the Eric Swalwell crisis the uh, Hunter Biden crisis and ignore the jo John Ossoff crisis. This is clearly a pattern of um, activity from the Chinese Communist Party. They identified uh, John Ossoff uh, after his 2017 attempt to run for the U.S. House and lost. They identified him as an ambitious uh, young uh, politician on the Democratic side that they probably could get influence with. So they hired him. And he worked for two years for this propaganda company, the Chinese Communist Party, Julie. And he hid it from the people of Georgia during his primary. He might not have won that primary had he fully disclosed that. He got caught. He then disclosed it, lied about it, and lied about it again. And he still didn't answer Peter's question. If you notice that, he never has answered that question. I asked him that in a debate. He didn't answer it. Peter asked him that yesterday. He did not answer it. He has not answered it yet. All right. Uh, Senator David Perdue, uh, good luck to you and your wife. And I wish you uh, all the health in 2021. And good luck on Tuesday. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you.